Greetings and welcome to another Factorio tutorial. I'm Catherine of Sky, and today we're going to be building a building train. Firstly, I would like to thank all of my amazing patrons and everyone else who supports me and my channel. You are wonderful. So creating a building train will allow you to set up outposts and have materials delivered automatically, finishing the construction job while you're off tending to other things. Now there are two main parts of creating a building train system. The base station and the receiver station, or the outpost station. We'll start first with our base station. This is usually in your main base or wherever you're producing factory building components like power poles, assemblers, etc. Find a spot near your production facilities and lay out a train station that can serve five cars plus the locomotive. Leave at least four tiles of space on one side and two on the other. Now we're going to use a standard layout of medium electric poles in the space between each car, but don't add them just yet. You'll want to set up the filters in the cargo wagon first or your train will fill with all kinds of random stuff. Technically, a wagon can be fed from 24 different chests if you place two rows of long-handed inserters, followed by two rows of blue requester chests. However, that can be quite slow if you have a large number of items to transfer, so you'll want to balance that with using stack inserters and a single chest on a tile to feed at a higher throughput level. You can design your building train any way you want. I'll give you my design and explain why I do things. Firstly, we know that a car can carry 40 stacks of items, and considering the limit of 24 types, we want to balance a lot of little items with cars that have greater stacks of the same item. You might wonder why we need a chest for every type of item. That's because if the train is full on a specific item, the inserter can't drop the item in its hand and therefore can't pick up a different item from the chest. That's why you always limit the request to one item per chest. Let's start with the first vehicle, which is the locomotive. Add a requester chest for fuel and an inserter to feed it. What I like to do at this stage is go through each cargo wagon and choose filters for the items that I want in specific cars, as well as the quantity. I then place down double sets of long-handed inserters for single stacks of items and stack inserters with chests for high volume items. You'll want to match the number of the requester chest between the quantity you have on the train. So for example, if we choose to have express transport belts and we want four stacks, we need to choose them in our requester chest to have 400 of them requested. For items like belts, rails, furnaces, and miners, I split the quantities between several chests to speed up loading. Also note that belts have very large stack sizes and other items like roboports have very small stack sizes. It pays to remember how many items are in a stack of a given item, but if you forget, you can go to your inventory, look at the logistics section, then choose an item. The number at the bottom will default to the stack size. Now let's go and see a completed building train. Now the car consist on screen shows the item types and the number of stacks of that item, not the actual quantity of items. Now in car one, since I often drive the building trains to sites, I include items like rails, signals, big electric poles, chests and repair kits so that I can easily access them as I'm driving the train. For example, so my construction bots can place new rails as I'm traveling along. And I don't need to get out of the train and go to another car to be able to reach them. Car two is my basic factory parts wagon. We have belts, inserters, machines, and a couple slots for modules. In car three, we have bots, beacons, chests, furnaces, and miners, a combination of industry and bot-based delivery. Car four is our last parts wagon, and we have oil and nuclear power stuff. Car five is the recycling wagon. Surround it with a few active provider chests with stack inserters facing outward so that you can recycle any items that your outposts don't need anymore. The purple chests will empty themselves into your base storage. Now, after you have all of your chests and filters set up, 
add the medium electric poles and you're ready to go. Now make sure to blueprint the station, chests, and the train itself so that you can save yourself time on the next map. As you are setting up this train station, you'll want to build the receiver in parallel. Normally, where you would put a power pole, put a constant combinator instead. For each car, add the unique items in that car to its corresponding combinator. Uh, so for the first car, you're going to want to add the rails and the power poles and all of the things that are in that particular car. For car two, you'll add belts and undergroundies and all the other things. And make sure you include every item that's in the car on the combinator. Adjust the constant combinator values for how much of a particular item you think you'll need at a specialized outpost. Now you're going to want to ignore zero numbers. For example, if you want electric mining drills at a particular outpost, set the number to 50 or so. Obviously you won't want nuclear reactors there, so ignore that number in the other car. Keep in mind that the number you set will be stored in the boxes after the outpost is built, so if you care about unused machines, then keep the numbers low. It'll take a few more trips to complete the outpost. For wagons like the very first, loaded with active building items like rails, etc., you can add those icons but make them a zero quantity, just so you know which car they're attached to. It really helps to be consistent with a building train setup across your save games. It makes remembering what's in each car so much easier when you take the train out yourself to go and build an outpost. Setting up the destination station requires some circuitry, but I will explain each step so that you can easily set it up yourself. Now go to your outpost destination and place down the blueprint with the combinators and put power poles on the opposite sides of the track. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to put it right next to our main base so the robots can help us build this. Now, place down six purple filter inserters to the left of the combinator. We're going to work with one car at a time. Now, do not use stack filter inserters. Make sure these inserters face away from the train. Connect the inserters together with red wire and also connect them to the combinator. Again, do not connect it to the other car combinator. Now click on one of the inserters and choose set filters. Exit the window and then we're gonna copy that setting to the other inserters. Shift right click to copy, shift left click to paste. And you'll see that the filters appear already on the inserters. Place a row of passive provider chests behind the inserters. Connect the chests together with red wire, but do not connect them to the inserters. Next, place an arithmetic combinator behind the constant combinator. And make sure that the arrows are facing upward, just for simplicity. Connect the red wire from the chests to the input side, that's the up arrow, uh, connect that to the arithmetic combinator. Now we're going to connect the output side of this combinator back to the constant combinator. With green wire, connect the output side of the arithmetic combinator to the constant combinator and then to the power pole opposite the tracks. We're going to set up the arithmetic combinator as follows. The input is going to be the yellow each sign. We're going to use the multiplication thingy and then multiply it by negative one. Our output is going to be this product um, and also the each sign. Make sure that you still have a blueprint of the original combinators. You're going to want to copy and paste everything from the first car onto the other cars. Now, if you try to copy the power pole with the green wire, because the railroad tracks are in there, it won't line up correctly. So you'll need to manually connect the output of the combinator to the power poles. 
Now you'll notice that the filters have all been changed to match the first one. That's why we still need this blueprint. And if you blueprint over the top of it, it will change the filters back to the ones that you originally selected. Now for your bot wagon, you only want four chests. So let's remove a few of those. Place filter inserters below them and then place a roboport below that. We're going to set the filter inserters to only have logistics and construction bots. And you wanna copy and paste those across each one. Connect the roboport with a red wire to the input of that arithmetic combinator. Now for the trash wagon, we wanna put two storage chests and two stack inserters to feed the train. We're going to connect these two storage chests with green wire and also to a power pole. Now we're going to connect the power poles together with green wire and that goes to the train stop. We're gonna set up the train stop as follows. The mode of operation is going to be enable, disable. We're not going to send it to the train. And the condition is going to be the green anything greater than zero. Now we're going to want to blueprint the entire station and just save it. Let's see, we'll call it the, let's see, station. Uh, building train, train outpost. And give it a couple of fancy little icons. B, outpost. And you can also give it a description if you want. Building train, receiving station, receiving station. All right. And... This will allow you to save the blueprint for use in other maps with all of the combinator settings at their default. I've brought you here to my functioning nuclear power station, which gets multiple building train deliveries because I keep expanding it. So what you wanna do at your actual outpost is decide how much of each item you want and change those accordingly. As we see, we don't need modules or long-handed inserters and bots and chests, very minimal amounts of this stuff, no furnaces, no miners, uh, but a lot of nuclear stuff. So adjust those quantities to what you need. Now I'd like to explain what we're actually doing with this setup. The constant combinator is our request list. And when you change the items on the list, that's telling the system how many you want. When we connect the inserters together to the combinator, we're telling the inserters to take specific items from the train based on the combinator settings. So those filters will go into this list, like these guys still need offshore pumps. Now, as the items are put back into the box, the boxes are also connected with red wire and it tells the combinator how many we actually have. So this thing multiplies it by negative one and sends it back to the combinator. So this says we want 50 and these guys are saying, oh, between the chests, we have you know 50 or 60. And this in turn sends the signal to one of our power poles via the green wire. And you can see the quantities in the right hand window there. So for example, we still need 30 regular pumps, but we are kind of over the top on everything else. Now, the way the train station is set up is that if anything is still being requested, like those pumps, uh, the, train will, the train station will stay open. However, if those requests are already satisfied, we can go here and look at a different station here. So this is another building train station and it has the red blinking lights that you can see over there. The train station is actually closed and our building train will no longer stop there. 
Now this is my functioning building train, which is going from station to station. You can see the ones in red are the ones that have disabled themselves and the train will just skip them and not go there. Now the train is set to go for five seconds of inactivity. Oh, there it goes. See, it skipped these two and then it goes back to the base to go and load up on whatever materials it needs. This allows you to have many stations being serviced by one building train, since they will effectively drop off the list as they're being satisfied. But this also means that you can expand outposts and gain more materials or remove outposts remotely since all the components will end up in the trash and come back to the base. Now note that the storage chests must be the only ones in the network or the items are likely to languish elsewhere. I hope you found this tutorial informative and interesting. Are there any other topics you'd like to see me cover? Let me know in the comments. If you have questions or want to meet other Factorians, come on over to our Discord server. As always, thank you so very much for joining me. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.